The Santa Anita Derby was billed as a match race between even money morning line favorite Messier and six to five morning line second choice Forbidden Kingdom. Messier entered the Santa Anita Derby off of a 15 length win in the grade three Bob Lewis. Behind and the others are well back as Messier turns it on at the top of the stretch. And he is making his mark on the three-year-old crop. It's Messier putting on a dazzling display, opening up by 10, by 12. Messier all alone in the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. Cabo Spirit was clearly second. Meanwhile, Forbidden Kingdom was coming in off of five and three-quarter length win in the grade two San Felipe. They turn for home. And Forbidden Kingdom still strong on the front end. A seven-length advantage. Doppelganger is clearly second, but it is Forbidden Kingdom. A stellar display. Six-length lead past the 16th pole. And what a performance from Forbidden Kingdom under Juan Hernandez in the San Felipe. However, when it came time to run the Santa Anita Derby, these multiple graded stakes winners off of big prep wins would both go down in defeat to a second-time starter stretching out from six furlongs to a mile and an eighth. And his name is Taba, a colt by Gunrunner out of Need More Flattery. Gunrunner won the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, Need More Flattery was a hard-hitting Ohio mare that Tim Ham trained. She won 14 stake races. Usually when you see a first-time starter uh, win its debut big and get a, a 103 buyer, uh, you, you tend to see early developing precocious speed sprinters in the pedigree. That's not the case with uh, Taba. And quite honestly, when you watch Taba's debut, Johnny Velasquez had to ride him very hard. He was put in, he was put in a tricky position, and uh, Johnny V had to push and shove on him to hold that spot. In fact, we'll watch his debut, and you can see for yourself. Table will be breaking from post position number four. They're in the gate, and they're off. Tabor rockets out of the gate. Magic in the Moonlight has speed, too, and is up to take a narrow lead. Pioneering Papa in the yellow colors moving through inside of that pair. And one more bid is down at the rail, about four lengths off the lead. Mauritius is next. The two trailers overrule and 10th Street Dawn at the back. Magic in the Moonlight at the half-mile pole leads it by a head. Taba presses from the inside second. Mauritius joins them three wide, a half length off the pace in third. Pioneering Papa, one more bid between horses. 10th Street Don outside that pair and overrule at the back. Three furlongs out, and it is Taba showing the way. Mauritius pressing on the outside. These two square off. Magic in the Moonlight is weakening a bit in between them. Then a wide one more bid, and down at the rail, Pioneering Papa, they turn for home. Taba has the lead, opens it up to about two lengths over Mauritius in second. They're followed by one more bid in third. They're coming to the 16th pole, and it's Taba now letting it out a notch and strutting his stuff. Taba in a sparkling debut. Look at him jet home. Taba romps, wins by almost eight, nine lengths. Mauritius, pioneering Papa. One more bid and magic in the moonlight. All right, you can see Johnny V on Taba. He's in kind of a tricky spot here. He, he's got a horse to his inside, a horse to his outside. He can either ease back and get, get out into the clear where you kind of want to be with a first-time starter. Uh, but this is a Bob Baffert-trained first-time starter, and Baffert likes his horses ridden aggressively. So you're going to see Johnny's actually going to do what I think would – probably be the thing that wouldn't be ideal with a first time starter. He's going to he's going to be pushing and shoving and riding hard the whole way to keep his spot in there instead of just relaxing him to the outside and I'm sure that had a lot to do with uh Baffert training the horse and Baffert's instructions, but anyway, we'll run this in slow motion. And you you see Johnny's really got to go to a ride here. And that's a difficult spot for even an established horse to be in. 
uh, kind of sandwiched in between two horses, wedged in there in the middle. Uh, for a first-time starter, that's a real tricky spot. And he he's just – he's being used here. I mean, Johnny's pushing on him. Uh, so if you bet Tabe at one to two in this spot, um, maybe you knew he was the super freak that he was. Uh, but if you if you bet him at one to two and didn't know what he what he was and what he was capable of, you would be really worried right here with Johnny going on an all out ride in him in this position. And finally, he's able to get clear of the three. You see Johnny repeatedly looking back there just to see if he's clear. The last thing he wants to do is, uh, you know, cut over when he's not clear. So he, he's clear here, but now he's head and head in, in a basically eyeball to eyeball speed duel with the seven. So 22 and one for that first quarter. And he was being hard used between horses at this point tables look two different horses in the eye and now you got the five the four to one uh, second choice in the race getting the run of the race just cruising up outside and i mean if you bet the f the five horse here four to one you'd really like uh kind of how this was unfolding but obviously it just doesn't matter because taba is you know i mean he was just obviously way 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 too good for these horses you see, Johnny's just riding him hard the whole way, and um, usually when you do, when a first-time starter has the kind of trip that he had down the backside, you would expect them to come up, you know, kind of empty in the stretch. And not only did he not come up empty, I mean, he just took off like a rocket and kept, uh, you know, really kept widening the margin through the wire and did it stylishly. I mean, this horse was ridden so much harder down the back stretch. Than he was in the final eighth of a mile. Johnny was riding the hair off this horse down the back stretch, uh, but in the final eighth of a mile, you know, he was just sitting on him as the horse was drawing off with disdainful ease. So that was a look at Taba's debut. Now we're going to see him slay the two giants in the Santa Anita Derby off just his second career start in stretching out. All right, here's the Santa Anita Derby. You got Forbidden Kingdom, the number three. He likes to go right straight to the lead and usually open up a couple lengths. So he's going to the lead. The four, Messier, you're going to expect him to be rating off. The number six, Taba, you're going to be expecting him to rate off. Now, these are both basically Bob Baffert horses. So on paper, you would think maybe the four and the six might kind of get hooked up together you'll have forbidden kingdom loose on the lead and the four and six might get hooked up together in second but with both of these horses trained by baffert uh that was unlikely to happen i don't think baffert wanted wants his two horses you know eyeballing each other down the back stretch um you, you know hooking up early in a race where they're both stretching out to a mile and an eighth so you're gonna actually see tabe is gonna outbreak Messier and is going to have more early foot away from the gate, uh, but Smith is actually going to ease him back off of Messier. Anyway, with all that said, let's watch the race. And they're off in the run happy Santa Anita Derby. Forbidden Kingdom flashes his speed right out of the gate, and Taba came away in good order second. Messier third through the opening furlong, and Armagnac is fourth, about four lengths off the pace. Then Happy Jack and Win the Day is at the back of the field. Forbidden Kingdom goes a bit wide into the first turn, and Messier moves right into second. The favorites are 1-2 as they head to the six furlong pole. Two more back to Taba in third. Then it's Armagnac fourth, five lengths off the leader. Happy Jack is next, Win the Day far back. Field heads to the 5 8 pole, chasing Forbidden Kingdom, who's cruising along. He's in front by a length and a half. Messier getting a little bit closer in second. It's three more back to Taba by himself in third. And Armagnac is fourth now, six lengths off the lead. Big gap to Happy Jack and win the day. They're heading to the 3 8 pole in the run happy Santa Anita Derby. And Forbidden Kingdom has been the controlling speed. Messier moving in now within a half length. Taba has just two to make up as they come toward the quarter pole. 
Armagnac fourth, and Messier has taken the lead at the quarter pole and quickly pulls away from Forbidden Kingdom. Tabor running a giant race on the outside, three sixteenths of a mile to run, and it's Messier and Tabor one two. Forbidden Kingdom five behind inside the eighth pole. Messier, Tabor running lights out on the outside, and here's Tabor getting the upper hand in the final stages. The run happy Santa Anita Derby goes to Tabor under Mike Smith. Messier was second. Happy Jack third. Armagnac finished fourth. If you're curious if a horse has ever won the Kentucky Derby in its third lifetime start, it did happen before. It happened in the year 1883 when Leonidas, who's pictured here, won the Kentucky Derby. If you're looking for more information on this horse, when Leonidas won the Kentucky Derby, they didn't get a blanket of roses, but they got a blossom, and he actually ate the roses that were presented to the human connection. So this horse won the Derby in its third start in 1883. He ate roses. Following his win in the Illinois Derby, he was attached at Chicago for a debt of $1,305 for whiskey, cigars, and borrowed money owed by co-owner Jack Chin to Lawrence Martin. Chin had to post a bond of $3,000 to get the, co the colt released, and he was shipped to Monmouth Park the next day. Okay, so it has happened before. It was back in the year 1883 when uh, rent in New York City was $20 a month. You could get an apartment in New York City for $20 a month. Chester Arthur was the president. You see old Chester there. He was president in 1883. Uh, I think he he uh, come after James Garfield, who got assassinated in 1881. So the president of the United States in 1881, James Garfield, took a bullet, assassinated, died. You got this guy, Chester Arthur, in 1883. He's president of the United States. Leonidas wins the Kentucky Derby in just his third lifetime start, and he gets impounded later on because his owner stiffed someone on some uh, whiskey and cigars. So that's uh, that's 1883 Chicago for you. They just come and, uh, you know, if you're not up on your debts, I, apparently they just, uh, they just take your Kentucky Derby winner hostage until uh, debts are paid. I don't know. That's, uh, that's what the internet says could be true. Could, could be a wife's tale, but, one thing that is true, no horse has won the Derby in only its third lifetime start since 1883. And in the case of Taba, he didn't debut on March 6th. So he's got, he, he's literally only got two months in him. Um, does that matter though? Watch that last eighth of the Santa Anita Derby again and tell me if that matters. Here he is. You mean to tell me this horse can't get another eighth of a mile? I think he can. In four weeks' time? I think he can get another eighth of a mile. I mean, it would. Uh, I'd feel even stronger about it if Bob Baffert was still training him, but that's not happening. Anyway, I hope you liked our look at the Santa Anita Derby. That was Taba.